Yep, yep, yes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Buffalo Sports Center. I am Don, and this week we are previewing yet another Buffalo Bills game. This time it's week 10, and the Bills take on the Denver Broncos on Monday Night Football. The Bills limping after losing three of their last five games. The Broncos, they are currently on a two-game winning streak, surprisingly enough, with their wins coming against the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Will they stay alive? Will they keep their winning streak alive as well? Well, we shall see. But first, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. You knew that one was coming. Make sure to follow us on the Instagram. Join the Discord. Follow us on TikTok as well. All of those links are down in the description below. Please go check those out. Now let's talk a little bit about the two teams. And let me start off by getting calling out the Bills offense because it's – been really, really bad. Ken Dorsey, I'm surprised he still has a job. And until the Bills make some real changes on offense instead of just saying some buzzwords during press conferences, I can't take them seriously. I really can't. Josh Allen has been a turnover machine this year. He's got interceptions and in now I think five straight games going back to geez, week five against the Jaguars, I believe. It's just been a really, really rough season for him. And it's been a super rough season for Gabe Davis, not Stephon Diggs. Diggs has been good. He is okay. But Gabe Davis, I gave him praise last week after he caught eight passes against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But do you know how he followed that up? He caught zero passes against the Cincinnati Bengals. Zero. Zilch. He was targeted only twice. This guy is just not cut out to be a functional wide receiver, too. He's a fine third receiver, but to ask him to be a, an a, a above-average wide receiver, too, it's impossible. It's just not possible. And I raged a lot on after the game on Sunday night between the Bills and Bengals, and I really laid into Sean McDermott, but he really needs to stay focused on the defense, stay out of the offense, because if Ken Dorsey can't figure it out, I don't think Sean McDermott can either. And let's talk about James Cook a little bit, because the last couple of weeks have been extremely rough for him. He's been not very noticeable. The Bills try again and again to establish a running game in the second quarter, and you know what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. They get zero points. They fall behind most times against better teams, and they really have sucked. And I don't know when the offensive struggles are going to end because this week the Bills are facing a rejuvenated Broncos defense led by Nick Benito, Josie Jewell, Pat Sertan in the secondary. This unit, ever since being uh, the laughing stock of the NFL when they gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins, they've I think they've really rebounded. And I'm very surprised that they are 3-5. and five. They could have easily been 1-7, and 1-6. But, nope, they have three wins. I, I don't really know how. Well, actually, I can tell you how because this Denver defense loves generating turnovers. Last time they played, which was a couple weeks ago because they are coming off the bye, uh, they faced Patrick Mahomes with a stomach flu, but that did not stop the Broncos' defense from generating five turnovers, and they were absolutely fantastic in that game. I watched the tail end before going back and watching some film, and the Broncos' defense was all over the place. They were suffocating, high pressure, high blitzing, some great linebackers as well, you know. I really wish the Bills had some decent linebackers because looking at the Broncos, their linebackers are making a world's worth of difference for this team, especially since, well, ever since they've lost Kareem Jackson to another suspension after yet another dirty hit, they actually have gotten a little bit better. And if it weren't for an offense that really has struggled over the last month or so, this team could be 500. They had a chance to beat the Jets a couple weeks ago, and the offense blew it. But that's it. But it's really weird. I can't totally criticize the offense because if I criticize the offense, then I have to criticize Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson has had a quiet bounce back year for the Broncos. 
against the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, he had a couple of touchdown passes. He's currently leading this two-game win streak for the Broncos, and he only has four interceptions this year. He's got a touchdown interception ratio of 16 to 4, a 101 quarterback rating, 600. 1,613 passing yards, and a 66% completion percentage. So for Russell Wilson, individually, it's been a good year for him, especially after the horror show that was when Nathaniel Hackett was the head coach. But Russell Wilson under Sean Payton, he's been much better, leagues better. The problem is the supporting cast around him hasn't been very good. Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton, I will say, has had a couple of good clutch tight touchdown receptions, but they're not really generating consistent yardage in open play. The tight ends, not too much of a factor. Now, it does help for the Broncos that they are finally seeing Javante Williams fully recover from his big time injury last year and he had a large workload on a couple weeks ago against the Chiefs he had uh, 27 carries 85 yards that's only three yards per carry but that is a promising sign for the Broncos especially after you only had 10 carries 12 carries seven carries uh, in the games preceding that so Javante Williams got much more involvement this past game against the Chiefs that's good for the Broncos because but the defense playing as okay as they are, the Denver Broncos' offense, they don't really need to do a whole lot. They just got to hope that their defense continues to generate turnovers and that they just have to finish. And against the Chiefs, they finish their drives. Despite them not really imposing themselves offensively, they were able to finish drives off of turnovers when they were playing with short fields. So that's a positive. Now, they are going up against a Bills defense that is how should I say, battered and bruised. They have really, literally, quite literally, lost everybody on defense. Micah Hyde now is injured. Terrell Bernard is also injured. And that's already on top of Daquan Jones, Tredavious White, Matt Milano, and a bunch of other guys already being injured. They're pretty significant injuries as well. So this Bills defense They can't catch a break. They have really, really struggled with injuries, but that hasn't stopped this unit from actually playing okay against the Cincinnati Bengals. The first two drives were terrible, and then they only gave up three points in the second half. That's it. Three points in the second half. 21 of Cincinnati's 24 points came in the first half. This team knows how to make halftime adjustments on defense. At least Sean McDermott can lead a defense. I don't know about an offense, but he certainly can lead on the defense, and I will give my props. I have hated on Dane Jackson, cornerback for the Bills in the past, but against the Bengals, he played extremely well. As I, I thought Rasul Douglas also played well, but Von Miller has not. Von Miller missed what could have been a game-saving tackle on Sunday night. Now, would have it made a huge difference in the long run? No, the Bills were going to lose the game anyways, but Von Miller has just been totally invisible since coming back from his injury. The Bills may still be snap counting him, saving him, but I'm not sure what they're saving him for because now for Buffalo, a playoff spot is not a 100% certainty. They are going to have to fight for a wild card position because the division also appears to be gone. Even though the uh, the Bills are only a singular point behind or single game behind the Dolphins, it doesn't look good. But folks, thank you so much for watching. I was Don. Let's see a little bit about the BSC panel because there's only four of us this week, but that hasn't stopped them from making some very bold predictions. Thank you so much. Let's check it out. Don't allow the big plays down here. Allen running out of time. Tripped up. Sidearm sling to Diggs. And he. Fake it to Diggs. Allen to the end zone, and a lunging grab is made for the touchdown. It is.